What is up guys, JD here. Gonna bring you my full review of the Tactile Knife Maverick. Let's get into it. All right, so before we jump into my thoughts and impressions, let's go ahead and do some quick size comparisons because this is a larger offering than the rock wall if you're familiar with that knife. So I'm gonna go ahead and start out with the Benchmade Bug Out, which is gonna be a knife that I think a lot of people are gonna think of when they see this Richard Rogers design. And I hope that I'm saying that right. I forgot to bring the box with me to help me remember the name of the designer. Let's go ahead and bring out the Protec Mordax. And as you can see, this is actually closer in size to the Mordax, which is a larger knife. Really excited to see that. Let me go ahead and move the bug out to the side. We'll grab the Demco AD 20.5, which is another medium EDC knife for me on this channel. And we'll go ahead and move the Mordax out of the way. And as you can see, the Tactile Maverick is actually bigger than the AD 20.5. Let's go ahead and bring the Shaman out here. Now the Shaman's gonna be just a skosh longer on the back end, but it's gonna be really close in blade length. I think the Shaman has just a little bit more, uh, you know what? I'm gonna call that pretty damn even. That is close enough for me to call that even you are welcome to disagree down in the comments below i know some people will totally disagree with me and that's fine you're welcome to your opinion here is the cjrb echo which is another medium sized knife in my edc rotation as you can see the maverick is actually larger here is the civivi praxis which is a larger edc for the budget realm and as you can see really close in size just a little bit shorter in length but not by much. So this is definitely a full-size knife. Having said that, let's go ahead and use the full-size knives in my inventory to do some thickness profile comparisons. So you can see how this will carry in hand and in pocket. So you can see right there, it is just, just a little bit thinner than the Praxis. Here it is against the Protec Mordex. And I'm going to say the Mordax is just a hair thicker, it looks like. And last but not least, the Spyderco Shaman. The Shaman is going to be a little bit thicker as well. Actually, I would say that's probably a fair amount thicker. I'm going to start with Ergos on this knife. And I'm going to start about, I'm going to talk about all the positives first today. Because there is a lot that I like about this knife but I also have some issues with it. So we'll jump into the ergos. This is extremely comfortable in hand. It is a little bit thinner in profile here than what you saw on like the Shaman, but it feels very nice and very comfortable. The contouring on it does help it feel thick in the hand enough to where you have a grip, but it doesn't feel like a thick knife. As you could see, the Mordax and the Shaman were actually thicker than this. So I really like the size, the overall size of the knife. And I love how that feels in hand because the contouring helps again, make it feel like it has something there. So it's not so skinny that you're just sitting on flat scales. It kind of helps round out the grip a little bit on there. So I really do appreciate that a lot. The milling on here is absolutely beautiful and it adds texturing so that you have something to grip onto. I love that they carried that milling line right on through the pivot bolt and the pivot collar here on this side. I like that a lot. Going to jump into the pocket clip because we're talking about ergos, but we'll come back to my thoughts on the looks of that. It is very comfortable because it does ramp at a good angle and it doesn't feel intrusive or invasive. It does not create a hot spot. So the ergos on this knife for me are outstanding. Let's talk about while we're here, the crossbar lock. Now I wish that they would have gone with a little bit more of a grippier, less rounded access style lock. I am gonna bring the bug out back out here because this is the type of lock that I wish they would have gone with. One that you can disassemble and separate with torque screws. I like the way that this one stands up more. You have more steps on it than you do on the Maverick. So this is actually more comfortable to operate because it feels flatter without having the bull nose rounding up. So the bull nose rounding up put, 
makes it protrude into the thumbs a little bit more so it's not as comfortable as the bug out style and i would actually probably try to measure the crossbar just to see if this crossbar lock would fit this knife because i actually would switch to this style crossbar lock it's that much more comfortable than this one now having said that it's not awful it's just not great i would say it's okay at the worst thumb studs on here same thing not a huge fan of these thumb studs i prefer the thumb studs that are on the bug out the bug out again having more steps on it not bull nosed it grips on the thumb very nicely so that it's going to deploy no matter how much of that thumb stum, thumb stud you grip it's going to fire very nicely Whereas on here, the bull nose feels a little slick. I don't feel like I can come over top of it comfortably. I have to come underneath of it. So I wish that the thumb stud would have been, would have had more steps, would have had the Torx opening so that you can remove and install them easily. So those are just a couple of the things. I guess I can't really hold the complaints to the end. So we might as well dig into them. Ergo's great, looks for the milling great looks for this pocket clip are horrendous i hate this pocket clip and it actually kind of ruins the knife for me it just looks i know it's titanium at least i believe they said that steel on the micarta and i think this is it the steel liners yeah the steel liners i think the steel liners are what's catching yeah, this is titanium, doesn't feel as far away, but yeah, like right about here, I'm starting to pick up the steel liners. It doesn't feel like it does when you put it there, like it's not as pronounced. So I, I, I believe that it is titanium. Um, I just hate the look of it. It looks like a money clip. It looks like they legit took the money clip, and this is the same issue I had with the rock wall. I just... I don't understand why they just don't do a flat milled titanium pocket clip, maybe even make it round. So you see how these match the lines on the relative? It's a fantastic design, beautiful milling, and the pocket clip does not take away from the knife at all. If, if anything, I think it complements the lines of the knife. Such a fantastic design. This just kills it for me. It absolutely kills it for me. I mean, you could have just done a straight titanium two hole over top of each other, <laughs> or you could do, could have done like Vero, um, something that kind of rounds and matches the lines and mounts from the opposite side. Like totally could have done Chicago cru uh, screw style anything like that it just absolutely kills it for me uh magna cut blade has a beautiful finish on it nice stone washing on there i believe it's very minimal but it is there 63 to 64 heat treat on magna cut steel really really nice let's take a quick gander on the i gotta turn it upside down guys Blade stock, we're going to do right in front of the pocket, I mean the pocket clip, the thumb studs, so that we can see where the thickest part in the cutting path is going to be. So let's call it uh, 2.46. That feels good. And then we're going to add the thickest part and the thinnest part today, because I'm always usually just doing the middle. So I'm trying to find the thumb studs so I can find where to stick this on here on the knife. So thickness, yep, 55 thousandths behind the edge on the part closest to the studs. And then uh, on the tip coming in, yeah, 55. So consistent, 55 throughout, that's great. Nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, last complaint, mine came to me. I think it's... Uh, it's focusing on the fingers. <laughs> Sorry. I hate to do this from underneath because of the blade with just a hint ever so slight hint of side to side play 
I don't even know if I can get that to show on camera. It's so slight. I have to kind of come out on the edge. You see it? It's so slight. I'm I'm wrenching as hard as I can. Not as hard as I can. I'm wrenching really hard, um, as comfortable as I feel that I can holding the tip of a knife. Hopefully that makes sense. I worry about uh, cutting myself. Let's see here. There you go. You had it for a second. What happened? Let's do this. Will you focus here? Will you focus there? There you go. Maybe I can get it to show up there. But it's just a hint. It's no worse than my bug out. And that's just the way that it is with washer knives. Washer knives, if you want to get that drop shut action, it's just something that you have to accept with a washer knife. You're going to get side to side play if you want any type of smooth, almost foot fall shut action. The last thing that I'm going to complain about is my knife out of the factory came with scratches out towards the tip on both sides of the knife. Really bad right here. Um, but as you can see, let me find the lighting that I'll let you see this. I think it's right there. You can see all kinds of scratch marks towards the tip on a brand new knife that I picked up from River's Edge Cutlery. This is definitely where they were sharpening the edge and I'm not quite sure what happened, but when they're getting to the tip there, they're getting really close and the edge itself, even though it's really clean and it looks really well done, just disappointed to see those scratches. Now, I have reached out to Tactile Knife. I did send pictures. Oh, before I forget, I've tried my best to center this knife. And as you can see, there's more gap on the pocket clip side than there are on the show side scale. So this thing favors the show side and I've tried taking it and disassembling or loosening the screws and just adjusting it real quick cannot get it to center up at all no matter how much i tighten or loosen the knife outside of those issues though i like the knife i think a different pocket clip would definitely improve the aesthetics i'd like to see them clean up these little <laughs> scratches that you're seeing from the factory i don't want to see that on a knife that arrives brand new if i do it myself that's on me but it came out the package like that and the day that i unboxed it i took the pictures and sent it to them about the centering in the blade's edge i'll do a follow-up video for that and give a more of a long-term update i'll let you know how the response and interaction was when i had an issue with my bear it was they contacted me within a couple of days i sent it to them within two weeks they sent it back to me um, they said that the edge was actually a little too long and it was hitting the backstop, so it fixed it and I had no other issues after that. So I'll be curious to see how this goes. The action on here is good. The thumb studs, again, fine. Crossbar lock, fine. I'd like to see them switch that up and just do the type that have the torques to where it makes it easy to maintain and disassemble and do everything that you need to do with the knife. I like to take my thumb studs off when I sharpen. That's why I like the Torx on there. I like to break down the crossbar lock and take it out. It makes it easier to do it from one side for the maintenance and the pocket clip. The things that I like, ergos are great. I love the milling on here. It looks a little bit different than it did in the picture. It's definitely darker. I, I feel like they polished it more in the beginning and they're probably trying to get these out production wise a little bit faster. But unfortunately, um, I'm going to end up regardless of what they do end up polishing it oh and the anno on the standoffs are beautiful but it doesn't match it doesn't match the collar or the uh pivot screw so i'd like to see that matched up a little bit better as well for the money for the money right for a uh, 350 dollar knife I, i'd like to see those issues taken care of i don't really care as much about the studs as i do that pocket clip i'd rather see a completely different pocket clip on there also it's an ambidextrous knife so i know that the hole probably doesn't look good but if you can mount it from the opposite side where you could have the screw coming in from the scale and then coming across through here maybe you could find a way to make that ambidextrous i don't know that's just more suggestions than anything but overall $350 properly heat treated magna cut steel with a fantastic edge and really good looking knife with fantastic ergos. I think there's a lot of promise here. I would just give the feedback to tactile 
to start sending out production. I'm sorry, not production. Start sending out prototypes to even if you're just doing it to a handful of channels that you know that are going to give constructive feedback. They're not going to bash and beat on you and tell you that it's crap because it's not crap. It just needs a few tweaks to be really great. That's what we want to see in the community. We want to see this be really great. It's a USA product. We want it to be a complete home run, something that's going to actually pull attention away from stuff that's coming in from overseas. That's the reason that we're so passionate about the feedback. It's coming from a very good place. We want to see it done well, and it's a great looking knife. I think it'd be a fantastic model. I think not everybody likes a crossbar lock, even though this one's okay. Uh, it's no different than a bug out as far as how it feels deploying, opening, and closing. A liner lock version of a big knife, even if it's not this knife, I think is going to go a long ways towards the community. A liner lock or a nested liner lock for something like this uh, with a detent and being on bearings, I think could also go a really long way. I don't even know if you could with this knife. I know it's very thin. But if you could put the really thin versions of the bearings that are on there, I think it would really improve the action and your ability to tighten up that pivot and still have really smooth action, but no play. So just those are my notes for feedback, but it's a great knife. I'm happy with the model and it'll probably be one that stays in the inventory because I do like to hang on to USA knives. They're further and farther in between at this price point with this much premium going on. You, you're looking at Sabenza. Spartan Harsey, you're looking at um, Arius when you're getting into this type of level of performance, and those are going to run you almost double the price of this one. So I can recommend the knife. Those are some of the things that I do think from a feedback perspective would help this knife really stand out. All right, guys, it's been about two and a half weeks. Uh, unfortunately, I sent this in for the warranty claim right before Blade Show. So I absolutely have no doubt in my mind that that is the reason for the delay. I think it would have been back inside of two weeks like it did when I had to send my bear. So I've had the bear, I've had the rock wall, and now I've had the Maverick. And I think I've kind of hit on everything as far as the knife is concerned, at least I hope I did in the review. Um, I probably should have checked that video, so I apologize. I should have checked the first half of this video before I got to this one. So I'll just talk a little bit about the knife since I've gotten it back. So they did fix all of the issues. The blade looks phenomenal. The edge on it looks really good, looks very similar. I have cut with it. I haven't tested it since I've cut with it, but yeah, no issues whatsoever. The, the blade is fantastic. What a great factory edge. Um, they continue just to just improve. And I know that there's been some folks out there and I know that there's probably some people that are going to watch this that'll sound off about their experience with Tactile. And um, I think they're a young company. I, I would hope that they take the feedback that, let me move this off the table, that sending prototypes out will help eliminate some of the rough edges and experience that some folks have had. Um, I'm not quite sure I'm going to try when I edit to look back and put it here. So future me, make a note. Is this pocket clip different? It looks like they changed it. So they replaced the knife is what I'm gathering from them. Um, my issues were that it was a little scarred from the belt it looked like. It looked like it, the belt had hit it lightly and it might have been hard for whoever was working on it to detect that it was so um, it was so light. And then I, the centering, I could not get it centered to save my life here. You can see it is centered. I mean, it's so cl it's too close to call that I don't care. I am still trying to get this one to break in now because <laughs> I had the other one for a little while. And then I reached out when I was doing the recording is when I noticed the scratching or just before the recording, I noticed the scratching. But for me, I like this knife. Um, it's a nice profile. It's well made. I, I love the finishes on it. It looks good. I, I think this one looks a little bit more polished than the last one, but it could be placebo. Um, I don't think the standoffs are quite as dark as the first one that I got, but I plan to polish this. I plan to polish the scales and leave them as is and then polish up the hardware bits that are anodized and i plan to do them kind of the same darkness that you see here see how that polish makes it pop 
and you can go a little bit deeper and keep that pop. Um, that's what I'd like to do here. I think that would look really, really good. And uh, comparing the two of them here, I might not need to polish the scales. It might just be that I take the hardware and kind of reset those a little bit. But I like this. I think this is going to be a great EDC. I think I mentioned in the last one, if Sat2 can get his equipment going and if he gets back into the swing of things for making things and he wants to, I think this would be a relatively easy pocket clip for him to just make. I just want a standard pocket clip. Um, if he thinks he can do it, man, a flat one that has the milling lines on here. I mean, that's all I really want. These spacers and washers and everything like that look kind of weird, um, you know. I even say that about this one if they would have been able to make it. But, you know, if he wants to do something with it, you know, knock it down. And so, you know, this is what I would have liked to have seen on there. I would have loved to have been able to reverse the screws into it. But this screw goes into the standoff. So unless we can find a Chicago screw that would be able to catch the underside, um, and have one that goes in reverse there. I just think it might be too much work. So, I, you know, I would defer to Dave on how to do that. And then again, the thumb studs, you know, they're okay. They're fine. They're not my favorite, but they're not the worst in the world. They're definitely not a Sabenza for sure. So really good warranty experience again. Life came back and now I am very happy. Blade play, blade play, I think. Yeah, I think I'm going to leave the unboxing on there because hopefully you can see there is almost no blade play. And, you know, I'm giving it a good amount of pressure, but I'm not trying to wrench on it to the point where I'm almost starting to bend it. It is not fall shut yet. Uh, I probably will when I disassemble to do the hardware, just clean everything up, polish these washers as well, and then put my own lube on there. And I think that'll help get it there. So it's starting to work in, but it's not quite there yet. With the knife in this condition, it is an easy recommendation. I like it. If you do not like crossbar locks, don't get this knife. You're gonna be disappointed no matter what. I can tell you that this has stronger Omega Springs, that it has good resistance, but if you're looking for a detent, you're gonna get mad when you go to do this and there's not enough resistance for it to pop out. With Omega Springs, you have to ride it a little ways and you have to intentionally flick it out. You're not going to be able to take a washer knife on an Omega, I'm sorry, with a back lo uh, spring lock or crossbar lock. Sorry, I'm mixing that all up. You're not going to be able to do that with that. It is the same with any washer knife. You can't expect the detent to hold that in there enough because there's resistance, there's friction. You have to with force open oops, and close these i'm so used to closing that one because it hasn't broken in this one's starting to break in to where i don't have the blade play and it's closing more smoothly while remaining centered there's a break-in period with washers and i think people just don't realize that because you get a bearing knife and when you do that i mean there's no effort in closing it um so that's where i'm at with this one easy to make a recommendation if you don't hate crossbar locks you know they're going to break in if you're used to foster bronze washer just keep that in mind that's my follow-up and the complete review for this because it'll be attached to where i started this review so i'm very happy with the warranty process and the communication from tactile and they back their products which is all anyone can ask for hope you enjoyed this one shout out and thanks to everyone out there that leaves the likes comments and is subscribed i love you guys i hope you have a fantastic week and until next time peace